we start with a puzzle. If I fire an arrow at a ball at the moment the ball is dropped, will the arrow hit the ball? Welcome to this Nothing Nerdy video on projectile motion. Here is the statement from the IB Physics Guide. You should be able to analyse projectile motion, including the resolution of vertical and horizontal components of acceleration, velocity and displacement. This means that you have to have a good idea of how to use vectors. Here is a typical multiple choice question on this topic. You should be able to answer it by the end of the video. When an object falls under the influence of gravity, but also has some sideways velocity, it follows a distinctive path, called a parabola. This is a combination of an acceleration vector vertically downwards and a uniform velocity horizontally. In this video, I shall be using the online simulations from the PHET website. You will learn a lot from exploring these simulations. This simulation on the PHET website will help you to understand the motion of a pumpkin shot out of a cannon at an angle so that its path is a parabola. The parabola is a special curve, not the same as a circle. It is steeper at the edges and is the motion of an object in a uniform gravitational field. When an object flies through the air, if we neglect air resistance as many physics exam questions do, there is only one force acting on the object and that is its weight, the downward force exerted on it by the gravitational attraction of the Earth. And so its acceleration is also vertically downwards and constant at all times, as shown by the yellow arrow here. Now we will look at the motion of a pumpkin fired straight upwards with a constant gravitational acceleration downwards. When we look at the velocity vector instead, we see that as the pumpkin rises, it is pointing upwards and reduces to zero at the top. It then points downwards as the pumpkin accelerates to the ground. Now we incline the cannon at an angle, so we can study the motion of the pumpkin when it is shot with a horizontal component of velocity. Firstly, the only force on the pumpkin as it flies is its weight, which causes it to accelerate vertically downwards. The pumpkin does not fall straight down because it also has a horizontal component to its velocity, so it flies in a parabolic path. The velocity is a bit less simple, however, because the pumpkin has both horizontal and vertical components to its motion. The vertical component follows just the same pattern as when the pumpkin was shot straight upwards. It points upwards and decreases to zero and then points down and increases. At the same time, the horizontal component just stays the same. There is no force in the horizontal direction, so nothing to make the pumpkin speed up or slow down. When these two velocities are combined, using the parallelogram rule to add vectors, we achieve the resultant vector you can see here, which forms the diagonal of the rectangle of the components of the velocity. Now we can see all of the vectors and their components which work together to make every object moving under the force of gravity follow the same type of path, a parabola. This question is about a ball falling under gravity and also having an initial horizontal speed of 12 meters per second so that we know that the path is going to be a parabola. We can separate the vertical and the horizontal motions and the variable that we know that links those two together is t because it's the same time for both. So vertically we know there's a no initial vertical velocity so s equals ut plus a half at squared the first term can disappear and we can reorganize s equals a half gt squared into t equals the square root of ts over g. When we substitute in there we find that the time taken till it hits the bottom is three seconds. We now substitute that time three seconds into the horizontal motion where we know there is no acceleration horizontally so the second term is zero and when we substitute that in traveling at 12 meters per second for three seconds we find that the distance traveled is 36 meters. The answer to this puzzle is that neglecting air resistance I will hit the ball because both it and the arrow are accelerating downwards from the same height with an initial vertical velocity of zero. Mm -hmm.